Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jake from TNJ, and welcome back to the Lions franchise. And we are off to another good start. And man, we are looking talented. This whole roster is pretty talented. And I am actually surprised because a lot of these guys are coming into situations where they are first year starters. I mean, both of our cornerbacks. Justin Coleman is still playing, but just think of like Tim Jackson and Vincent McLeod. So many new starters on defense. And then also offense, you know, we don't really have too many new starters, but Miko Harmon goes into a full-time starter role, and it's just fun to see this team play. So we are going up against the Denver Broncos in this uh, next game, and just looking at them, you know, they have Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. That is actually a... I'm a Broncos fan, and I don't know how I feel about it, but I, I don't know. It's something that could happen in real life because, honestly, the Broncos don't really have a solution at quarterback. It still could be Drew Locke. Who knows? But let's not focus on them. Let's talk about the Lions. So I compare the kind of progression of TJ Hawkinson and Noah Fant because they came into this series as pretty similar overalls. And look at the difference. Noah Fant is only 81 overall. And Hawkinson is like at 89 right now. So just looking at the Denver Broncos, this is an interesting game because this is the first time I've ever seen a team with no superstars or no superstar X Factor. So they're actually kind of rebuilding here. So let's see what they can do in this game. So we are on the road at mile high. Here is the quarterback, Justin Fields, out onto the field to start this one out, throwing the ball to Hawkinson, who we were just talking about, and that is a first down. So hand off to the left side. That time, Kennedy Brooks gets in, and he's hurt right away. Remember, Travis Etienne is hurt, and now Kennedy Brooks gets hurt on that first drive as we get into a third and 13. Here is Fields buying some time. He's going to unload and throw this one deep to McCoy Hardman, and he is going to overthrow him. He had a linebacker on him. That's a favorable matchup every single time and we had to punt the ball away. So out comes Teddy Bridgewater, out onto the field, throw across the middle. That's gonna be Cortland Sutton open, and he gets to about the 25 yard line. Teddy Bridgewater starts out this game pretty hot. So here's a handoff to the right side. This time, Philip Lindsay is still on the squad. Touchdown, 29 years old for him, and he gets in the speedy back, and that's a touchdown, seven nothing already for the Broncos at home. So here are the Lions back on an offense. Play action fake on the next drive to start the second quarter. And there is Hardman on the sideline. And he catches that one inside the 10-yard line. So here's a draw play. Handoff this time. Kennedy Brooks. Actually, that's uh, that's Johnson. Carry on Johnson in the game on the delayed handoff. He gets inside the five. And that brings it to a second and goal. On the next play, here's a throw across the middle. That's Kenny Galladay open. And that's a touchdown. And that's one of the things I think Madden has to fix. It seems like getting on the goal line is way too predictable for the defense because they pretty much send an all-out blitz every time it leaves one guy open. I hope they will address that maybe next Madden. I'm pretty sure you can't really patch that. I mean, you can, but I'm sure it's not a big deal at all. So then we do get the sack from Shaq Barrett as we wind this clock down inside of a minute left in the first half. Here's a throw across the middle. That's a wide open. Tylen Wallace, Justin Fields, just misses him on that throw. Bring it to a second and 10. Throw it to the left side. There's Wallace again breaking a tackle and gets tackled at about the eight yard line. And that brings it to a third and three. Here is a throw out to the right side. It's gonna be Wallace again. He's gonna fight in for the touchdown. And that one will put it to a two, uh, actually a one score lead as we go up by eight points here. And now here we go at, at about the 25-yard line here towards the end of the third quarter. Here is a throw across the middle. That's going to be Galladay who gets open. That's a pinpoint throw where it had to be for a first down. So at the 11-yard line, here's a handoff up the middle. That's going to be Carrion Johnson. He gets tackled at about the two. And that makes it goal to go here at about the four-yard line. Throw across the middle. That's Josh Oliver who has it in the end zone. And he can't hang on. And look at that. That was a perfect, maybe not a perfect throw, but probably a throw that Josh Oliver still should have had. 
So third and goal. Here's another player scrambling out to the right side, and that's good contained by the defensive end. And we do have to settle for the field goal, making it a two-score lead. So now we fast forward inside of five minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Can we come up with a stop here on the goal line? Here is a handoff, Philip Lindsay. He gets stopped behind the line by Ali Gray. So second and goal, throw to the end zone. That's gonna be out of the back of the end zone. That's Noah Fant again. And that's not gonna be a touchdown as he couldn't get two feet in. Third and goal, throw across the middle. That's gonna be thrown out of bounds and Teddy Bridgewater I don't know if he had pressure in his face, really. He just threw that one away. And now they do settle for a field goal to make it an 18-all game. So here we go. Four and a half minutes left here in this game. Can we drive down the field and put together a game-winning drive while controlling the clock? Here's a good start. Kennedy Brooks out the left side, and that is enough for a first down. So here is Fields this time, trying to get rid of it on the throw, and that's going to be a sack by Barton around the corner. And now that brings it to a third and 14. This could be disaster. Throw to the left side. That's going to be Hawkinson. He's got it in traffic. Nice catch, nice throw. First down to about the 48-yard line. So now we wind this clock down within three minutes. Here is a throw to the left side. That's Galladay again getting open on the sideline. He's got a first. He does stop the clock, but he does move the chains. Delayed handoff once again. Kennedy Brooks fighting forward inside the 30-yard line. And now we are uh, pretty much in field goal range as Gammon does have the range from this distance, but we want to keep moving this clock. Third and six this time. Thrown out to the right side. He's got Galladay, and he will get pushed out of bounds, but it's enough for a first down at the 21-yard line. So here is... Fields, now at a second and 10, trying to burn this clock down. You see we're at about a minute 15 left here in the fourth quarter, and we do get the rock to the middle of the field. And now that brings it to a third and three at about the 14-yard line. This time, Fields throws on the run. It's Hawkinson, first down. And we will get them to burn all of their timeouts and milk this clock down for a game-winning field goal. Gammon is on the field. And that is going to be the game, a three-point victory on the road as the clock expires and we will stay undefeated here in year 2023. What a good win. Justin Fields was pretty much spectacular, almost near perfect. He threw two touchdowns and spread the ball around quite a bit. Kennedy Brooks ran the ball decently. Only 58 yards rushing, but he did exactly what we would expect him to do. Galladay, remember, in the beginning of this episode, he was kind of having a down season. He needed a bounce back game, and he has eight receptions for over 100 yards and a touchdown. Great game from him. So we do have some coaching upgrades, something I don't do much uh, often at all, but I'm going to get to it now. So I do want to kind of upgrade some player retention skills because I do have a couple of players that are eligible for extensions and guys that I do need to keep around guys like Trey Flowers we also have some young running backs as well we also have the most important guy which is Quinn Bryant and I, I am just I'm happy to see these guys you know getting their paydays but we got to be smart we got to be smart in the draft and keep building this team up so now we move to some player upgrades after that victory. Tim Jackson, who I was just talking about in the beginning of this episode, he moves into kind of a nickel role with rotating in with Justin Coleman. He gets an upgrade. And remember, he was an undrafted guy in season one. He started at like 61 overall. He's now up to about 71, 72. Marlon Yarbrough has an upgrade, almost at the 70 overall club. He hasn't gotten in much, but he's going to have time to develop at receiver behind our veterans. Reed Watts, who was our fourth round, I believe, draft pick. He is going to get an upgrade. He is still hitting dev. We'll see what he ends up being. I'm guessing it's going to be star, hopefully superstar, but you never know. Ali Gray has an upgrade, and we do just want to keep upgrading him all around. He will be an eventual superstar on this defense. 22 years old. Man, he is good. 
and he has been flying around the field. So one thing I'm going to do probably after this episode is change his number. I just realized it's Barry Sanders' number, so he will change that around. So going into this Falcons game, Jelani Tavai actually has an upgrade development trait opportunity. He's got to get one, more than one, interception, forced fumble, or a sack, or one of those uh, statistical categories. And I guess we'll have to play all defense in this one because, I mean, we've had opportunities like this before, but we just haven't been able to convert at all. So I'm actually going to go all in on this game, play all defense, as we face Gardner Minshew, the quarterback of the Falcons. No more Matt Ryan as Minshew Mania moves to Atlanta. And their offense, it doesn't look too impressive. They have a lot of young receivers. They have Josh Reynolds still. They also have uh, a lot of guys. I mean, but the thing is, I think we can stop them. And that's why I'm intrigued by this game because, like I said, Minshew is only 69 overall. And then they did sign Chris Harris in the offseason. Remember, he did play one season with us, and he's a really good corner. I mean, honestly, he's just an aging guy. That's why we didn't re-sign him. If it wasn't for his age, we probably would have re-signed him and retained this defense. But I don't think this defense is really missing a beat because you see these games, our defense is really doing a number on these offenses. So let's start out this game. We are at home. Here is Minshew as our offense did probably turn the ball over already in our own territory. So that is why Minshew starts out with a good field position. So here's a wildcat formation, giving it off to Devontae Freeman who gets to the left side. He's inside the 10-yard line on that wildcat jet sweep. That may not have been a jet sweep, but just a handoff. Here's a throw across the middle. Minshew does find his target. That's Josh Reynolds touchdown for 85 and they make it a 7-0 game as like I said we're going to play all defense no offense in this game so I'm really depending on this offense to put up points so you can see look who it is Bryant Ryan making a stop in the backfield here is Jelani Tavai trying to get a tackle but Sean Chapman does come up with the cleanup duty so now third and 11 here from the shotgun. Five wide receivers out there. Throw to the left side. That's going to be just short of the first down. Knocked out of bounds by Justin Coleman. And we do get them to punt the ball away. So our offense does finally get on the board as we move on to the second quarter. Here's a draw play up the middle. That's Jelani. And remember, he needs two or more, one or more actually. And look at this. I think that's actually his second tackle for loss. So... I think that dev trait upgrade is solidified. So third and 14, throw across the middle. That's going to be intended for Jake, but nice play by Ali Gray breaking that one up. And we do stop them once again. So our offense can't get anything going again. Here is Devontae Freeman running the ball, but he hasn't been able to get anything. Seven carries for negative two yards. So third and 12 this time. We're trying to confuse the line. Sending the blitz gotcha, this time, bitch. and Minshew is going to go down. That's Justin Coleman and Trey Flowers there for the sack. As now we get them to punt the ball away, but our offense looks like they're a little stale in this game. Throw out to the right side on the next drive. There is Minshew finding his target, Robinson on the sideline. So second and five at about the 34-yard line. This time Minshew by some time. Throws across the middle. It's Reynolds again. He's got it inside the 20-yard line for a first down. So this clock does continue to run this time. Minshew moves to the left, throws back to the right. He's got Ridley on the sideline, and that's a first down inside the 10-yard line. As now this clock stops, they still have all three timeouts. Throw across the middle. It's Ridley again, and that is a first down as Minshew is moving the ball on this drive. Can we come up with a stop? Play action fake this time. Minshew buying some time. Gotcha, He's going to go down. That is Bryant Ryan. Remember, he showed up last episode because of the injury on Bilal Nichols. He finally gets some more burn, and he does get in for the sack. So third and goal this time. Minshew buying some time. Throw across the middle. It's going to be caught again by Reynolds, his second of the day. And we cannot come up with the stop. The third and long. That's a devastating play. And now Atlanta takes the 14 to seven lead. So here they go out to start the second half, running the ball with Devontae Freeman. 
And he does pick up his longest gain of the day. That's a gain of nine. So now they get it to a third and one. This time running a draw play. That one is not going to work. Devontae, he gets tackled in the backfield. That's Ali Gray, the rookie. And now we do get on the board on the following drive. Bring it to a 14 all game. Running to the right side. Devontae Freeman tackled once again by Ali Gray. You can see the potential oozing out of him. And now they get it to a third and six. This time throw out to the left side. That is Freeman. He is going to get stopped by Justin Coleman in the slot position. And there we get the stop. And we do put some more points on the board, making it a three-point game. Dump off pass, throw across the middle. That is Gardner Minshew finding Freeman out of the backfield. It doesn't really look like he's playing like a 69 overall quarterback to me as he throws out to the right side. That's Jake Butt on the sideline. And he picks up about a gain of one. And they do kick the field goal and tie this game up. And hopefully our offense can answer back once again. So now we move this game to within five minutes left and our offense didn't get any gotcha, thing going. But here on the next drive, look who it is. It's Bryant Ryan, the rookie. And I did not think that he would be this good to start out this season, but he is leading our team in sacks. He is all over the field. He is definitely making an impression on this defense as Gardner Minshew tries to throw out to the right side and it is going to be knocked out of the hands of his receiver by big play slay. So look at our offense, they do score here. So now Atlanta has one shot. Can they drive down the field and tie this game up with under a minute left? First pass out to the left side, that's Josh Reynolds who gets tackled by Justin Coleman as they do hurry it up to the line here for a second and 10. Deep throw across the middle, that's Jake Butt who goes up and gets it in traffic. That is a tackle by Tracy Walker as big play Slay could not make the play on it. So now they get it to the 44 yard line, 30 seconds left, throw across the middle, that's Jake Butt again who gets open up the seam and that is a first down and Atlanta does call their first gotcha, time out. Bitch. So we do send some pressure on the next play and we are gonna get to him, that's gonna be Shaq Barrett on the sack that time and that brings it to a second and 17 at the 24, throw to the right side, that's gonna be a tackle in bounds and now they call their last timeout. So now 18 seconds left, throw to the left side, it's Jay Butt again, but he gets tackled in bounds. And take a look, they're gonna try to hurry it up to the line, but this clock will run out and they do come up short on this final drive. The Lions stay undefeated on the season. What a good win and wow. I think the Atlanta Falcons may have just squandered an opportunity to take that one possibly into overtime, but I'll take it. The defense does prevail as our offense. We definitely need to lean on them as Tylen Wallace went over 100 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Kenny Galladay had a more quiet game in this one. And then on the defensive side, can we say enough about the job that Bryant Ryan did in this game? Two sacks and look at Jelani Tavai. He did get two tackles for loss. So that dev upgrade should be solidified with that victory. So after this matchup, we do have some player upgrades. TJ Hawkinson, and man, he's almost so close to the 90 overall club as we have some offensive upgrades with Carrion Johnson next. He is still doing pretty well for us. He's a number 16 ranked, ranked back in the league and he is backing up Kennedy Brooks right now, who does join the 80 overall club. Can you believe how good Kennedy Brooks is? Think about it. I drafted that guy in the seventh round, and look at him. 80 overall here in his third NFL season. Tylen Wallace gets it upgraded. He's still really young. He's at about 78 overall. Then Bryant Ryan, who just had that big game. He does not move up in overall, but I do want to get that block shedding up. It's only at 75. So I will be working hard to get that up there. So Jelani Tavai does officially get the star development trait. It's been way too long, five seasons now, but he is finally upgrading that dev trait as he has led our team in tackles. I'm surprised he hasn't been at star development already. 
So I do want to end this episode just trying to extend Trey Flowers. Now, it does make sense right now because he's 30 years old. We get him through his, at least his prime as far as a defensive lineman. It can be older. It can be from about 28 to about 33. You can see what Cam Jordan is doing, for example. He's still shredding it, and he's an older defensive lineman. And we could not get a deal done this episode, so we will have to negotiate some more. He's really asking for a ton of money so it's definitely going to be hard to lock him up but that's my plan i want to kind of lock up trey flowers i was down on him earlier in this franchise but now back to back 10 sack seasons i think he's a st staple on this defense so that's going to do it here in this episode next episode we'll probably get through the next four games so we're going to have the packers next then the raiders so you don't want to miss any action hit subscribe hit that like button stay tuned let's get it let's go I've been working hard for a minute The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention It don't matter though, yeah And it don't even matter though, nope